Do you consider yourself a Rick and Morty super fan? Well, I bet you never picked up on these little gems. Hey guys, Noah from Watch Mojo here, and today we're counting down the top 10 craziest things you never noticed in Rick and Morty. Hurry, come with me! We can be rich, and we also all get to keep one, and we can play Nintendo games! Nintendo, give me free stuff! For this list, we've taken a look at the many little details and easter eggs that have been intertwined into the plot and design of multiple Rick and Morty episodes. Sanchez! Are you a musician? I dabble, Mr. President. Get this man and his grandson on a Black Hawk to Area 51. Number 10, House Damages. In the day-to-day -day of Rick's adventures, not everything remains intact. Wait, what? Was the house... When we pulled up, I could have sworn the house was completely trashed. Hey, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few planets, right? In many cases, the destruction wrought by Rick, Morty, and whatever intergalactic presence they're pissing off this week is repaired, with the Smith-Sanchez household as good as new by the next episode. But not always. At the end of Season 1, the house and part of the lawn are transported to another dimension. When they're returned, a huge crack is left across the driveway. The crack never fully goes away, with Jerry weed whacking it later in Season 2's autoerotic assimilation. In that same season, Summer accidentally blasts a hole in the garage roof. Look, I'm your father, and I love you, is all I'm saying. I'll leave it at that. Fine, Dad! <laughs> oh, he might have said to take it outside. It remains lazily repaired with boards for subsequent episodes. Number 9, Jerry misses Doofus Rick. Jerry has it rough. Despised by his father-in-law and disrespected by his family, he's less the head of the household and more the butt of every joke. I guess this is what rock bottom feels like, Jerry. Ow! Yes, he's sort of a mess, but it's not like he's the most terrible person on the planet. <coughs> Rick. <coughs> the lonely Jerry is therefore astounded when he makes a friend. Rick of Earth Dimension J19 Zeta 7, aka Doofus Rick. Hey, get a load of this. Jerry's hanging out with Doofus Rick. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. I'm not Doofus Rick. I'm Rick J19 Zeta 7. Oh, is that the timeline where everybody eats poop? The two part ways at the end of close Rick counters of the Rick kind, but evidence that Jerry still thinks of his friend crops up in a later episode. In it, a picture of Doofus Rick, along with a Titanic model and jar of applesauce, can be seen hidden on a shelf in the garage, likely placed there by Jerry. Number 8, Stowaway Parasite. Roughly halfway into Season 2, the Smith family home becomes infested with a pest far worse than most. I don't like glowing rocks in the kitchen trash. Well, I don't like your unemployed jeans and my grandchildren, Jerry. The parasite moves from person to person, creating false memories and identities in a bid to repopulate the planet. They embed themselves in memories, and then they use those to multiply and spread out and take over planets. It's, it's disgusting. While Morty eventually figures out how to defeat them, the show never elaborates on how they got inside in the first place. However, two episodes earlier, at the end of Morty Night Run, Rick loads up his spaceship with green crystals. A pink, egg-like lump is clearly visible on one of the rocks. Later, Rick is seen dumping those same green crystals in the trash. As the dead aliens are shown to have similar pink lumps on their spines, the crystals are most likely the culprit. Number 7, Eric Stoltz. Rick and Morty started off as a riff on the 1985 classic Back to the Future. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. The parody, which followed Doc Smith and Marty McDonald's on their horrible adventures, somehow spawned the much more enjoyable Rick and Morty. With that and a little Back to the Future trivia in mind, we get our next entry. The original casting of Marty McFly, who later became Morty Smith, was not Michael J. Fox, but Eric Stoltz. Perhaps in some parallel dimension, Stoltz was never recast. And in Season 1's Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, there's an Eric Stoltz version of Morty, albeit in his role as Rocky Dennis from the film Mask. The film was also released in 1985, four months before Back to the Future's summer release. That's right, Jerry! He, he's from a reality where everyone is Eric Stoltz mask people! He's Eric Stoltz mask Morty! Number 6, You Are Always Wrong. When Morty accidentally becomes a father after procuring an alien sex robot, Rick and Summer head off to the robot's planet of origin to find out what's what. Gazorpazorp in the Andromeda system. Scoot, Summer. Don't you need a new companion now that Morty's in the family way? I don't do adventures with chicks, Summer. On Gazorpazorp, they find a world sharply divided by gender. The females, proud, beautiful, and hilariously passive-aggressive, are the dominant gender. I am here if you need to talk. I am here if you need to talk. The males, subjugated for their reproductive purposes, have devolved into violently horny monsters. I said thanks, dum-dum! Go get more! Summer, put your burka on! That burka is a human rights violation. When Rick offends the females, he's put on trial. Yeah, you know what I have to say about that? As he and Summer approach the judge's throne, the Latin phrase, Cis Semper Calumnium, becomes visible. 
Unless you can read old languages, this might go right past you. However, it roughly means you are always wrong. Or if it's a reference to a passage in Deuteronomy, constant oppression. In any case, justice is far from blind on Gazorpazorp. If you impose Gazorpazorp's laws on Earth, you're no better than the men whose farts shall remain unspoken. Number five, Summer is Jerry with different hair. Of all the Smith Sanchez family members, Morty is the only one with his own distinct look. No one else has that round little noggin. Beth and Rick have similar characteristics like their oval face and of course substance abuse, but that's a whole other topic. But it's Jerry and Summer who are dead ringers for each other. I just wanted to spend some time with my daughter. You're growing up so fast. You used to be my little girl. <laughs> yeah. They literally look exactly the same, especially as Summer is the only leading female character not to wear makeup. She has no eyelashes and no lipstick. I spent a lot on this top. Side by side, Summer and Jerry are identical, each just sporting different hair and clothes. We'd say like father, like daughter, but skin deep is where the similarities begin and end. Number four, Rick's musical past. Is Rick secretly a musician? Though never directly mentioned, we're given hints to his musical past throughout the series. When a race of giant heads suck Earth into an intergalactic talent contest, a frustrated Morty bails on the whole situation and has to be rescued by Bird Person. Morty. Bird Person? You appear to be dying. I will make efforts to prevent this, but can promise nothing. Huh. At his house, he sees photos of Bird Person's life, one of which shows him in a band with Rick and Squanchy called Flesh Curtains. Rick's musical aptitude also gets a nod in Big Trouble in Little Sanchez, when Tiny Rick writes and performs a song on the spot, and later in Season 3 in the ABCs of Beth. Rick is seen fiddling around on a guitar as he writes the song Doo Doo Butt. Perhaps he never lost his musical flair. Doo Doo, 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 doo Butt. No, no. Number 3, Harmon and Royland cameos. Most creators like to subtly put themselves in their work, and Harmon and Royland are no exception. In Season 1, the family pet turned dictator Snowball transports all the dogs on Earth to a new world in reference to Royland's earlier project, Dog World. Wow, a whole world populated by intelligent dogs. I wonder what it'll be like, Rick. I think it'll be great, Morty. You know, it's, it, it, it could be developed in, into a very satisfying project for people of all ages. I mean, I'd watch it, Morty, for at least 11 minutes a pop. In autoerotic assimilation, Rick dictates the plot of a fictional TV show as it airs, but in fact describes scenes from Harmon's previous show, Community. Now make them all make fun of the blonde one. Now make them all do it on the table. Can't believe you created a whole show for me. Now cancel it. Okay, now put it back on. <laughs> All right, I'm bored. The following episode, Total Rickall, features a Nintendo flipping scheme that Justin Roiland actually attempted. You guys, we gotta hurry. I just got back from Walmart. They're selling Nintendo 3DS systems for $149.99 on sale. Plus, every time you buy one, you get a $50 gift card. Brings the total price down to $110 after tax. Now listen, we can flip those sons of bitches for $230 a piece. Easy! And when three people are sacrificed to the giant heads in Get Swifty, the sacrifice labeled Thief is drawn to resemble Justin Roiland. Finally, the closing card Harmonious Claptrap follows Dan Harmon's relationship status, from marriage to divorce and life with his new girlfriend. Number two, Gravity Falls crossovers. Gravity Falls and Rick and Morty creators Alex Hirsch and Justin Roiland are real life buddies, and several shout outs between the shows have been made. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. Rick and Morty's Big Trouble in Little Sanchez feels a small image of Gravity Falls antagonist Bill Cipher in the corner of a computer screen. A pair of Mortys wearing Mabel and Dipper headgear can be seen in the background of the Rick Shank Redemption. All the different Ricks from all the different realities got together to hide here from the government. As for Gravity Falls, the real-life publication of Dipper's Journal Number 3 features a replica of Ford's wanted poster with the message Rick was here written in code. And when Grunkle Stan loses a notebook, pen, and mug into a giant portal, those three items are spat out of a portal Rick opens in close Rick counters of the Rick kind. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You sold a gun to a murderer so you could play video games? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you spend all day shuffling words around, you can make anything sound bad, Morty. Tune in to Rick and Morty Season 3 in like a year and a half or longer to see how we unravel this mess. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Walter White's House After being arrested by the Galactic Federation, Rick shows a Federation agent his memory of the day he perfected portal technology. Is that me? I used to wear blue pants. The memory shows him at his family home, at work in his garage, and happily married before his family is blown up. 
compelling, but fake. A false recollection used to facilitate his escape from the brainalyzer. The code you just uploaded wasn't actually my portal gun formula. It was a virus giving me full control over the brainalyzer. What are you talking about? This is a memory. You, you can't alter details of a memory. True, but you can alter anything you want about a totally fabricated origin story. But if you, the viewer, thought there was something familiar about the old Sanchez place, you were right. That's because the house Rick creates is a replica of Walter White's house from the critically acclaimed Breaking Bad, right down to the hedges. See, if the Federation spent more time watching groundbreaking television instead of trying to do whatever it is they do, they would still have a government. So what do you guys think? Did you notice any of these crazy Rick and Morty details? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like and subscribe to Watch Mojo, and click here for more great content.